Very much so. I think the degree to which uh, the degree to which New Englanders and Northerners in general like to present their uh, their experience as as not racist, you know, and displacing racism onto the South below the Mason Dixon line is is a is a self deception. You know, we're still working through these days. Uh, my I grew up in the era of busing in Boston. You know, the, the turmoil that that arose. Um, out of that particular act of social engineering, which uh, as a thinker and as a citizen now I'm thoroughly behind, but I, I grew up in a milieu that was that was not supportive of it. Um, so and, and, and we need to think, and I certainly think uh, all the time now about the ways in which the defense of the cultural values I grew up with was tied to a, de you know, a defense of whiteness and a and a deep belief that whiteness was the core of American values and that was tied to Western history and tied to the grandeur that was Rome and the greatness that was Greece. Uh, so it's, it's a complicated story. It, absolutely, and, and I think looking elsewhere uh, to Egypt, say, or further east, you know, that, that line of demarcation Thou shalt not look <laughs> further than Greece and Rome was part of the the fantasy construction of a history that began, in, you know, in something that we can call the West. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I want, I want to emphasize, while I think it's important to understand critically the politics and the questionable ethics and the questionable values that were bound very tightly into the the. Um, the high value that was placed on the classical world that I absorbed as I was growing up, I think the the ability to think critically and to also and to value that cultural legacy uh, is is what I what I really take out of it. I mean, I, I don't mean to imply that I realized in college and graduate school that my own embedment in and love of classical texts and classical history uh, was tainted, you know, by by its association with conservative politics. Uh, it's, and I think that's one of the things I, I, I hope students take away from their exposure to classics in, uh, and, and that people generally can take on board when they think about Greek and Roman art or architecture or texts or whether if they're watching movies or reading translations or reading poetry or novels that are inspired by the classical world that it's, it, its value as a legacy is, and its pleasure as a legacy is precisely that it ties together so much history and makes us think about why we invest in history and hopefully makes us think about not just the positive reasons of taking pleasure in the past, but you know the understanding why why we've preserved this past and the, the political and social uh, hierarchies that it's helped sustain. But it's very much of a, you know, all at once kind of thing.